Hi guys, so this vlog is going to be a little different. I was looking at some herping videos and photos from earlier this year, and uh, we had made a couple of trips to this particular location, one in um, early February and one in mid-April. And at the time we really didn't find enough to shoot full-on vlogs, but there was some really cool finds that I wanted to share with you, so I thought I would make a video out of the highlights. So this is a location in the hill country of Southern California. And we've had some really good days here, uh, rock flipping usually early on in the year. If you can have a string of warm days in January or February, um, these locations tend to produce a lot early on in the year. So it's the beginning of February and we've had a bit of rain and everything is greened up hasn't been super warm, but there have been a few days in the 70s. And you really have to check out temperatures and overnight low temperatures for every area you want to try out in Southern California especially, uh, because a windy spot up in the hill country like this might be considerably cooler than the valleys and inland cities. So we're up here at this spot I'm dubbing Next Gate, and I'm betting the soil is that proper brown color under the rocks, and we should see some herbs. Here's the first find of the day. It's a red diamond rattlesnake, Crotalus ruber, or just ruber for short. And this one was just coiled at the base of this boulder, getting some sunlight and heat while being shielded from the wind and pretty well hidden from aerial predators and such. We're not gonna mess with this one. We'll just take a few photos and videos and leave it right where it's at so it can keep doing what it's designed to do in God's creation. So I haven't been filming any of the rock flips because we're lifting an enormous amount of rocks to find a single herp here right now. And who wants to film a bunch of rock flips with nothing under them? But here is a really nice find. This is a large rosy boa uh, compared to the average rosy boas you find in the wild. This is Lycanura or Cuddy, which I, I always mispronounce Latin and binomial names. so. Give me a break. I, I learned things from reading, so I don't know how they're pronounced. Okay, this is Lycanura or Cuddy, at least right now. The classification on these guys has been kind of wishy-washy. This one would have previously been classified as a coastal rosy boa, Lycanura trivergata roseofusca. And the ones down south here, close to the border, um, are sometimes referred to as unicolor boas, and you can see it's kind of a uniform color. This is a really healthy looking one. Looks like it's been eating pretty well. Very nice find, and it was found by the old guy. Yay, old guy. Ian seems to be pretty happy that we finally flipped one. Rosy boas are always a very welcome find. They rarely bite and are just a cool snake to find and handle. Praise the Lord for every creeping thing, especially rosy boas. Ah, so this might not be that exciting to you guys out there watching, but this is something that I really enjoy finding in the wild. This is the western black-headed snake, Tantilla planiceps, and it can be a bit difficult to locate. When I first moved to Southern California almost two decades ago, these were high up on my list of herbs that I wanted to find, and I did not find one for a couple of years, and then it was a pretty big deal when I did finally find one. One of the problems was, I grew up herping mostly in the summer in the Midwest, and I wasn't used to flipping rocks so early in the year, and that seems to be the key to finding these guys. You get out here in January and February and early March, and you flip a ton of rocks, and you'll probably turn one up. You might get lucky and find one in April or May or later, but it's a whole lot less likely, at least in my experience, to find one at that time of the year. Well, I found a pretty relaxing spot that I've been to once before and I hiked here from a very very different location so I'm kind of surprised that I ended up here when I started in such a, a uh, far off spot from where I started a few years ago when I ended up here. 
Okay guys, if you know this location with this cool little rock chair and footrest and this fireplace ready to grill up some grub, please keep it to yourself. <laughs> this is a perfectly little secluded camping site and it's completely shaded. There really aren't many trees in this area, so you have to hike quite a bit to get back into this spot in this small wooded area. An absolutely peaceful place to just sit back and relax and enjoy God's creation. This year we had some rain early on, so February moisture levels under the rocks were pretty good. But by the second trip in April, everything had pretty much dried up, and there wasn't much to see other than rattlesnakes, which don't seem to be as moisture dependent as some of the smaller snakes, uh, particularly the colubrids in this area. This area looks completely different than it did back in February. In just a couple of months, it has really dried up and all that greenery has pretty much disappeared. Check out this big dude. This is a Southern Pacific rattlesnake, Crotalus organus helleri. I actually heard the slight noise of the snake slithering through the brush before I even saw it and way before it started rattling. I was looking right where I heard that faint sound coming from and it took a second for my eyes to adjust and my brain to actually figure out where the snake was. They are just so well camouflaged. So I didn't see a snake all day and now it's evening and this guy was just out cruising. I'm going to keep cruising myself and leave this guy to it. Thanks for your time Mr. Hellerai. This guy rattled when I was so far away. That hell ride didn't rattle until I was right up on it, and this Ruger rattled when I was like 20 feet away. It's crazy. He was hot. He was, he was already maybe bugged by something, and he was just out looking. You are pretty. I'm pretty angry. I'm gonna see if I can get a better angle on you. There we are. Yeah, a beautiful snake. There you go. You stay there, buddy. You stay there and I'll stay here and we'll be happy. How's that? Cool find. Cool find. All right, so what we just saw was a big male bull red diamond rattlesnake. And uh, the red diamond rattlesnake is one of the few species of rattlesnakes where the males actually get quite a bit bigger than the females. And scientists aren't quite sure why the males get bigger than the females. Usually for most snake species, the female has to be quite a bit bigger because she has to carry and birth the babies, the little neonates, so to speak. Um, but in the red diamond, the male is bigger. Scientists don't really know why that is. It could be something to do with having to ward off predators um, or it could be something to do with having a limited amount of territory available and uh, the males have to fight each other in combat for the territory and for the females it might have something to do with that but whatever the case is that was a cool big male uh, and he was just saying you get out of my territory now or you're gonna regret it and uh, yeah just took his advice and left, left him be. All right, guys, that's probably the last snake I'm going to see today, so I'm out. Thanks for watching. My family and I really enjoy getting out into creation and seeing as many creeping things as possible, and I hope that you enjoyed seeing these amazing creations too. Once again, thanks for watching. To God be the glory forever. Amen.